guys, this is very exciting. Uh, I'm cleaning up here because I'm kind of filming two videos at the same time. This is all my Insta360 stuff, exporting footage right now, and it says it's gonna take like, it's probably gonna take like an hour or two. And I've got a couple boxes that I'm really excited about opening. I pretty much uh, run in like, a very small amount of clothes. And over the years, I usually get like maybe like, maybe like one or two pieces of uh, summer running clothing a year because it just lasts so long. Winter running gear, I tend to get a little bit more. But this year, I kind of splurged and I got a couple cool pieces. So first off, another pair of New Balance shorts. Just some split shorts. This is nothing, nothing too special. This is a three inch inseam, so pretty short but uh, they have like a lining on the inside, so that's nice. A couple tank tops, Saucony. Pretty basic, uh, but it was also pretty cheap. It was like $20 on sale at Running Warehouse. New Balance tank top. I'm really pumped to have like some new summer clothes. So put those aside, and this is probably what you really wanna see. So these are Hoka's. First of all, okay, this is one pair. There's another pair coming too, so I thought it was both in here, but it's just one. First off, shout out to Hoka for sending these out to me. These are the new Bondi X. Ooh, baby, oh my gosh. Look at this. This is crazy. So these shoes right here are Hoka's brand new, like max road running shoes with a carbon plate in the bottom. So pumped to check these out. Ooh. <laughs> I'm pushing, I'm pushing pretty hard on here to try to bend these. That is, that's that's nice. Oh man, I wish these would have come a little earlier in the day because I just did a seven mile run. Uh, but wait for tomorrow. We have just like a mesh top, uh, which feels really light and breathable. The outsole is like kind of semi, semi covered with rubber. Uh, probably like the spots that most people would, are gonna wear down the most. Uh, for me, typically it's kind of like the outside, right up, right up in here, and then throughout the middle. Uh, I typically don't really wear the heel at all because I land pretty much like midfoot to forefoot. We got a little pull tab in the back. That's pretty cool. All right, for my size, we're coming in at 11.96 ounces, 339 grams. Not the lightest shoe in the world, but it's max cushion and it's got a carbon plate. Oh man, I just realized. Check out these colors. I couldn't have like planned these colors better. Woo! Okay, well I'm gonna get some footage of these and then tomorrow I'm gonna run in these, but you're gonna see it like real soon, like right now. <laughs> First run in the Hoka Bondi X. Carbon plate, daily trainers, what? Quick thoughts, a uh, couple miles into this run right now, and there's definitely a noticeable pop off when you uh, take a step. The carbon plate is doing something pretty cool. You don't notice it as much until you get a little bit quicker, around 7.30, seven minute pace. If you happen to be going a bit slower than that, it still feels great. It feels like a, a pretty supportive, kind of stiff uh, max cushion shoe. Man, this is something special, I think. Woo! What's up, the Hoka Bondi X in the house, and this is really sweaty right now, so 
I can't believe that I'm actually holding it this close to my face, but I wanted to film this like right after my first run and just let you guys know my first impressions on this shoe. Just as a reminder, this is a Hoka Bondi with a carbon plate in it. That's why it's got the X at the end. So this is kind of like Hoka's like, you know, kind of like everyday sort of like max cushion shoe. And it's a lot of people really love this shoe because it helps them recover, it saves their legs, it allows them to run longer miles, just kind of like an everyday trainer type of nice, fun shoe to run in. And they threw a carbon plate in there. But what? <laughs> so my first impressions of the shoe are really positive because it's not gonna be a super shoe. It's not gonna be a race day shoe for a lot of people that are trying to like really hit a really fast race time. So you're getting kind of the best of both worlds. I think you're gonna really like this shoe a lot because it's gonna let you run your everyday runs in a carbon plate. And yes, you're not gonna wanna run probably every run in a carbon plate. Some people describe that their feet get like extra sore when they use uh, carbon plate shoes too often. And I definitely have experienced that throughout my testing with all the different carbon plate shoes that I have. Um, but this one was something different. Like it, the carbon plate is there. It's noticeable when you are wanting it, when you're kind of running easy miles though, it was a lot more forgiving than some of the other super shoes I've tried. It was just a nice, like kind of pleasant running experience at kind of slower paces for myself. Once I sped up, I really did feel the extra pop and it wasn't as much as some of the others, but it was there and it made a difference. Honestly, on my first impressions, I'm pleased with this shoe. It's not trying to be a Nike Alpha Fly. It's not trying to be a Asics Metaspeed. Like it's just trying to be a Hoka Bondi with a carbon plate in there. It's just a really solid option for a daily trainer if you really like Hoka and you want sort of like a max cushion shoe. Just a couple specs of this shoe. It is a five millimeter drop pretty typical for a lot of Hoka's. Uh, that's five millimeters for the men and the women. Uh, the men's stack height is just a little bit more. The upper is an engineered mesh. I will say that the upper was a little bit hot on my first run in it. Uh, it's, it's just, there's a little bit more material here than what I would probably want in a, like a really like a summer running shoe. The interesting thing is they've kind of kept this same heel cup and Achilles area. They haven't gone with the swoop on this shoe yet. Maybe they just decided that that wasn't, like they're updating this with a carbon plate. They didn't want to change too much about it. And also you might not really want that swoop with this carbon plate in here. Like your heel kind of has to do a lot more pulling um, from what I've experienced with this shoe. Uh, and so you need to have a really good heel lock. You can't have something that might be sort of loose back there because just the nature of having a carbon plate in this shoe, like there's gonna be a little bit more pull on the heel as you go through your foot strike. Uh, but no problems with it. And I didn't even use this extra lace on my first run. Typically with like carbon shoes, I get a few little hot spots uh, in my forefoot. And that did happen again today, but it's usually just on the first run. So I will update you guys on that as I continue. Like these are definitely going to 50 miles. Like I think they'll be at 50 miles in like less than a week. <laughs> so I know I probably sound like I can't find anything wrong with this shoe and that's not the case. Like if I'm comparing this to something else that's like more of like a race shoe, yes, it's gonna be too heavy. It's gonna be too bulky. Like I'm, I'm not a huge fan of how big the outsole is. Like when you're running the shoe, there's just, there's a lot of shoe here. Back here, I'm not really sure exactly what it's for. I don't know if it's really benefiting me because my strike is kind of like right here in the middle to the front. I don't really strike on the heel. I did try on this first run to see what it was like striking with the heel uh, and just seeing like what the foot strike felt like as you go from the heel to the forefoot and it was fine like I didn't feel like there was any benefit to doing that so I just went back to my typical uh, running stride a few other things the foam is a compression molded EVA and it's got their early stage meta rocker design so it is supposed to rock you through the foot strike as I mentioned before the rubber is specifically placed in areas where Hoka has seen extra wear and tear they did not include it in the middle which is typically fine with me last thing this is is going to retail at $200. And I've already had a bunch of comments about people saying that they're not gonna pay that price for a Bondi with a carbon plate. And to those people, I say, that's fine. Like, you know, whatever. Uh, that's the price it is, 200 bucks. Is it worth it? We'll see. I will update you guys in my full review, whether or not I think 
this shoe, the Hoka Bondi X, is worth $200. So that's it for me today on my first impressions of the Bondi X. If you are interested in this shoe and you made it to the end of the video, leave a comment down below and let me know uh, if you have any questions about carbon plate shoes in general, Hoka shoes in general, anything like that, you know what to do. Leave a comment down below. But that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you again soon. Bye.